It's a new era for Washington football fans. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. A new era begins for the Washington football team as a new owner is set to take over the reign of the commanders. NFL owners are meeting this afternoon in Minneapolis. They're voting to approve the sale of the Washington commanders from Dan Snyder to Josh Harris. Harris is a DMV native and owns the Philadelphia 76ers and the New Jersey Devils. Local residents are weighing in on the end of the controversial Dan Snyder era. He's been owning the team for like 20 plus years and they've done nothing and it's just a bad situation all around, you know. I've lost confidence in the team. What would that do, do you think, for the commanders having a new owner? Um, it trickle down like decision making. It'll trickle down to the coaches, you know, allowing them to have more input on what players they can get, you know, because they've been having a lot of issues, you know, with player selection, you know, in the draft. And the team is being sold for $6 billion. A Temple Hills man has been indicted in connection with scams involving older black women. 59-year-old Keith Twiggs is accused of scamming two older black women. Investigators say his alleged victims lost thousands of dollars in what's known as a pigeon drop scam. The scam involved two people telling a victim that they found a large amount of unclaimed money. The scammers then convince their victim to contribute cash in order to secure a share of the so-called found money. Investigators say Twig's crimes involve theft, assault, kidnapping, cons, conspir uh, conspiracy, and robbery, as well as weapons charges. ...who prey upon the most vulnerable are seniors in our community. Um, I am just angry angry about it. And so we are going to get justice for our seniors. Um, if you think about, if you're thinking about uh, trying to scam um, our vulnerable senior citizens, uh, I, I would advise you just to leave them alone because my office, as well as the Prince George's County Police Department, we are serious about getting to the bottom of these scams and holding everyone accountable. And officials say it's likely that there are other victims. If you've encountered the scammers, you're urged to contact authorities. A Maryland lawmaker is working on legislation to protect firefighters from dangerous cancer-causing chemicals. Congressman Glenn Ivey has introduced a bill known as the Protecting Firefighters from Adverse Substances Act. The measure would require multiple government agencies to develop resources to help protect firefighters and other first responders from exposure to PFAS. Ivey talked about his bill at the Capitol Heights Fire Station this afternoon. So we've got this legislation, we're trying to move it forward, but it's critical to make, you know, to make uh, the effort across the country to push this forward. Firefighters across the nation who are doing this, this life-saving work, uh, it's critical for, to make sure we're doing everything we can to help them come home every night when they come back from work. And the Prince George's Fire Department and the National Capital Professional Federal Firefighters support the measure. Oh, well, school's out for the summer. Getting nutritious meals for kids can be hard for some families, but the Capital Area Food Bank is helping out. The food bank kicked off its annual free summer meals program today in Temple Hills. The kickoff included free food, music, and activities for kids. St. Stephen's Baptist is serving as one of the nearly 30 food bank sites in the DMV. The school year, a lot of children rely on school meals as potentially their only source of nutritious food during the day. And during summer, they just completely lose access to that resource. So that's where summer meals come in at sites like this at St. Stephen's in Maryland and the 28 other that we're sponsoring this summer. Kids can come get a free nutritious meal throughout the summer months. This is super low barrier. There's no eligibility requirement. During the summer, we're not even asking for names from the kids. We're just, you know, any kid who is school age, 5 through 18, is eligible to receive a meal. And to locate a free summer meal site near you, you can visit that website on your screen. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone. Coming up, behind on your water bill, help is available as WSSC once again extends its amnesty program. We'll have the details. Plus, it's summer camp time. We visit a special STEM camp in Landover, sponsored by a local lawmaker. Stay with us for the story.
Having health insurance is important. So if anyone in your family has Medicaid or CHIP, listen up. Check the mail for your renewal form. Complete the form. And mail it back right away so you don't lose your coverage. If you do lose your coverage, visit healthcare.gov to see if you're eligible to enroll in a low-cost, quality health plan. Healthcare.gov. Welcome back. Well, WSSC has once again extended its water bill amnesty program. This is the second extension of its Get Current program. It's aimed at helping customers who have a delinquent balance as of May 1st of this year by providing bill credits and waiving all late and turn on fees. So far, more than 1,500 customers have signed up to take advantage of the program. To see if you qualify, go to the web address on your screen. Kids around the county get the chance to learn about science, technology, engineering, and math for free through sports. The MVP Sports and STEM Camp is back, teaching Prince George's youth about the importance of STEM through basketball. Campers supply what they learn inside the classroom, outside, on the court, at no cost. The camp is sponsored by County Councilman Calvin Hawkins. The program director, Joseph Spears, talks about the impact of the camp using sports, more specifically basketball, to be able to look at uh, how we can get younger kids who love sports more involved into STEM education. For me, as a teacher, I want to make sure that the students have an opportunity to see all that they can for STEM and how that fits and how they can take that back to the classroom and really be great, great students. Individuals like Dr. Spears and the individuals at Coral Rice are giving young people a chance to see what it's like to be involved in educational, recreational, and sports activities during the day. It's organized, it's controlled, and they're away from an environment that could be the other way. MVP. And the last day of the campus tomorrow, the campers will celebrate with a trip to the National Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. Well, Governor Wes Moore signs an executive order creating a new council on the Chesapeake and Coastal Bay's watershed. The council will use a new scientific assessment on the health of the Chesapeake Bay to bring together different federal, state, and local agencies. The coalition will work to combat rising sea levels by adding living shorelines, reconnect streams to their floodplains, build out green infrastructure, and much more. EPA Regional Administrator Adam Ortiz says Maryland's biggest bay quality issues are coming upstream from Pennsylvania. And they passed an agricultural cost share program. They passed it, and they funded it, more than $200 million. And I talked to Secretary Redding, who's the agricultural secretary in Pennsylvania, and I was like, how's it going? He said, said we have $150 million of that programmed already. We know the farms that those practices are going in. That's a big deal. Pennsylvania also passed a fertilizer bill, regulating the amount of nutrients that are in uh, fertilizer products. That's a big deal, too. And Moore says there have been similar partnerships in the past. He wants this new council to supercharge collaboration between all the different Bay entities. In other news, a man is dead following a shooting in Hyattsville. The incident occurred at the 1200 block of Fairmont Heights Drive about 5 p.m. yesterday. When police arrived, they found 29-year-old Krishan Hoover Haskins of D.C. suffering from gunshot wounds. He was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was pronounced dead soon after arrival. Anyone with information on the shooting is asked to contact police at 1-866-411-TIPS. A Forestville Starbucks is closed today following a fatal shooting. It happened here yesterday afternoon in the 3400 block of Donnell Drive. The man killed has been identified as 35-year-old Jonathan Griffin. Pol Prince George's police confirmed that the shooter was an armored truck guard conducting business at the Starbucks. They say Griffin was shot during a confrontation with the guard behind the store counter. Police are still investigating what prompted the confrontation. Still ahead here on CTV News tonight, Simon Bugs with your Thursday Sports Page Report. Stay tuned.
What's up, sports fans? I'm here at the Xfinity Center, home of the Terps, where I got a chance to talk to the head coach and some players from the men's basketball team about the upcoming summer training tour. You don't want to miss it. Thanks for staying with us. Well, new surveillance video shows armed thieves holding a man at gunpoint and robbing his home in Rockville. Montgomery County police say four suspects approached a man, pulled out, a, pulled out guns in the parking garage of an apartment building on Key West Avenue on early Monday morning. The suspects stabbed the victim and, as you can see in this video, zip tie his hands behind his back. They next go to the victim's apartment and steal his safe, which contained money and jewelry. A $10,000 reward is being offered for information leading to an arrest and indictment. Well, coming up tomorrow, local farmers tell us how county residents can participate in the Maryland Buy Local Challenge. The Department of Agriculture hosts this statewide annual challenge, encouraging Marylanders to support local farmers. This 10-day event challenges participants to consume at least one locally grown product every day from July 21st to July 31st. A lot of people don't even know about us, and we're 20 minutes from the D.C. line, and we're growing things pretty much in your backyard, so to speak. State of Maryland's doing a wonderful job promoting things and trying to keep family farms like ours around. And those interested in participating in Buy Local Week can make a formal pledge on the Buy Local Challenge website. It's time for your Thursday sports page. The UMD men's basketball team is gearing up for their upcoming summer training tour to Italy. The team will go to four different cities and will play in three exhibition games. The team had its first practice of 10 leading up to the trip yesterday, and head coach Kevin Willard has liked what he's seen so far. Practice was great. Uh, you know, I, I like the fact that some, some of the younger guys from last year took some, took some steps and uh, played really well. I love the way the freshmen didn't take a back seat. They came out right away and tried to try to prove themselves. Um, I seen big jumps in in Jameer. Uh, Juju's taken some another big jump so far. He's worked a lot. He's worked really hard on the shooting and uh, playing a little bit more on the perimeter. And, and Dante's, I think, I think Dante's now poised to have a, a really good senior year. And I got a chance to speak with one of the players from the team, and he's looking forward to playing overseas. Yeah, it's definitely a great feeling, you know. I can't wait to get out there with the guys and plant, plant some new faces. You know, we've been playing each other this, the same, this whole summer, the same people. So it's definitely a great thing for the team overall. The trip will take place on July 31st to August 10th. And that is your Thursday sports page. Simon Bugs, CTV Sports. All right, and now for your weather forecast. Check out, we're checking on the three-day forecast. Tonight, scattered thunderstorms with a low near 71. Tomorrow, more thunderstorms with a high around 88. And Saturday, mostly sunny with a high near 86. Sunday, bright and sunny, highs around 88. And that wraps up our CTV newscast. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again tomorrow.